All right, good morning. Good morning to those online. Can we just stand up? We'll quickly pray. Get right into praise and worship. Lord, Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for waking us up, for putting air in our lungs. We just want to honor you and and bless you for being so faithful to us, Lord, Father, for giving us everything we need, for protecting us. I pray, Lord, Father, that we would be faithful to you just as you've been faithful to us. We honor and bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, church. Merry Christmas. Ready to celebrate. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. 
Lord, thank you that we have a reason to celebrate, God. We adore you and we bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless you.
You know, as we uh, come into this Christmas season, it's a great time to remember what God has done for us. Uh, he came down in the form of a child to grow up to a 33-year-old 30, man and, and, and save creation. And as we, uh, thank you, sir, uh, remember that uh, there's things we can do now to honor and remember what he did on the cross, and that's through communion. So as you're getting your elements, um, take about two minutes uh, to pray, talk to God, do any business with God that you need to. And if you're at home, uh, we encourage you, if you have any elements, you know, bread, a little bit of juice, uh, to join us in communion. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, you know, he had a little last dinner with his disciples, which we know as the Last Supper. And during that, that time of fellowship, he took some bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it out to his disciples. And he said, you know, this bread represents my body which is given for you. Take and eat. So let's eat in remembrance of the body that was given for us. And in the same way, he took a cup of wine. And he says, this cup of wine represents my blood. And his blood confirms the new covenant between God and his people. So in the same way we did with the bread, now let us drink in remembrance of the precious blood that was spilled for us. Let's drink. sending your son to redeem us. We thank you for making a way back home. We thank you for not giving up on us. Oh, Father, you've been such a faithful God. And we can see it in your word and in our own personal testimonies of how faithful you've been. And there's nothing there's nothing that shows us that you will eventually just stop one day. Lord Father, I pray that we would trust in you, that we would have continuous faith in you, that we wouldn't favor in that, or that we wouldn't waver in our faith. Lord Father, thank you for your continuous provision and protection over our lives. We honor and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and greet a neighbor real quick before we get into our announcements. All right. 
It's good to see a, a lot of you in here. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, today is December uh, 6th, 2020. Uh, the year is almost over. It's almost over. Um, but if you feel like you're one of these, you're one of the people that uh, feel like you've just been hanging on, hanging on in there, um, just wait for the message. I, I think it will highly encourage you if you just feel like you've been hanging on. Uh, any new visitors in here? Any first timers in here? Can you please raise your hand? No? Okay. Well, if, if you're new online, uh, we want to welcome you to our uh, online service uh, at any time you're watching it. Uh, we're Life in the Sun Guam, and we exist to honor God and spread Him everywhere in Micronesia and beyond. And we are a part of a worldwide uh, organization called Every Nation, um, which uh, seeks to spread Jesus in every nation. Amen? <laughs> uh, first announcement. Angel Tree Food Drive. If you are not able to get a gift tag and would like to still participate, we also have a food drive for the children's families. You can drop food and uh, food donations in the box uh, by the Christmas tree, which is in the back by the book table. Uh, the last day to do so is December 18th. Okay, December 18th. Again, thank you for being a blessing. Uh, Life in the Sun Christmas program. Life in the Sun Christian Fellowship presents the blessing of Christmas. Let us celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ on December 20th. Uh, we have services at 9.30 and 11 a.m. Uh, here at our facility. And you can, of course, join us online at 11 on our Facebook page. All right, next one is... Uh, GXM Virtual Run Walk Challenge. Uh, and here's a video from our sister church, Life in the Sun, Saipan. supposed to be kind of easy but because the wind the temperature is so cold it's a little bit harder so here I am I'm trying I'm trying I'm counting the cost I miss you guys bye hey what's up guys this is rolling over here in Las Vegas the beautiful desert behind me um, just wanted to share my uh, brief experience with the GXM challenge. Uh, I heard about it a day late. I had my first run yesterday and I ran slash walked slash ran for two and a half miles. Uh, you know, I have some kind of uh, prevailing injuries, uh, but I'm pushing through because I know this is what I need. I heard about the challenge and I thought, man, this is the, the push that I need to get back uh, to where I was at before. So I encourage you guys, if you're thinking about it, Hey, don't waste any time, man. Jump in this thing. Get your miles in and, and have fun. Join, join the rest of us, all right? God bless you. Bye.
Hey, Pastor Eric, thank you for inviting me to uh, join y'all in this challenge for December. If you can believe it, this is actually the middle of Seoul, and uh, I'm currently running, jogging up uh, Namsan, which is the geographical center of Seoul. And it's about uh, 40 degrees out, so not as cold as yesterday. But uh, yeah, glad to be joining y'all on this adventure. God bless. Half a day, mabuhay. Good morning from Guam. I just want to say thank you, Pastor Eric, for inviting me to join with this uh, very challenging 50 miles walk or run. I accept the challenge, and I just want to say thank you. And I will, I will, I will give my best to do this by the help of the Lord. And again. I'm here in the beautiful island of Guam with the rainbow. God bless and see you, see you soon. Bye bye. All right, so GXM virtual run and walk challenge. Did any of you get tired watching that? None of you? We all good in here, right? All right, amen. Um, so uh, the person that they were uh, speaking to, Pastor Eric, he's the pastor at uh, Life in the Sun, uh, Saipan Inn. If you uh, follow him on Facebook, uh, you can see that he uh, loves to get out outdoor and, and he's a very active guy. So this is right down his lane. Um, this is probably why he even started it. So um, he, he loves to, to just get outdoors and, and move around. Um, uh, beginner walkers can choose 50 miles to complete their goal uh, until the end of December. And serious or not so serious runners can choose a hundred miles. Amen, right? Hundred, not ten. Hundred uh, to complete their run by the end of December. Uh, run, walk at your own pace, at your own time, anywhere, even if it's your home. Or you can run, walk with someone or with a group. Uh, encourage one another. Let's go the extra mile. And this is based off of Matthew 5, verse 41, which says, And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Um, install the Strava app and start walking, running, jogging. Uh, Strava will record all your runs or walks from uh, in, in the time that we're doing this, even if you're not registered to the GXM group. Uh, since this is a virtual each participant is highly recommended to have a Strava account, uh, their own account on their smartphone or their GPS enabled watch and device. Uh, the app just simply tracks your route and tracks your distance. And this is available on iPhone and Android. Let's uh, finish 2020 well, not only physically, but spiritually as well. Uh, registration link and details are available on Life in the Sun Saipan's Facebook page. All right, so we got uh, a few birthdays. We have Cherry Lou by Udon, Vanessa Ignacio, uh, Jenny Laguana, Arlene Gautamed, and Mark Benevente. Happy birthday. All 
right? And we got one anniversary, and that is Lawrence and Tez Batongan. They were here in the first service. So if you see them, say happy anniversary. All right. Let's uh, just quickly pray for uh, a tithe and offering. Uh, Lord Father, we honor you with what we give, and we just thank you for your promises that are in your word about if we give what is owed to you, that you will surely, surely bless us and take care of us. So thank you for keeping up your part of the promise. And we bless it. We ask that you take it and bless it uh, on the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Van. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. I'm up here today because um, I would like to honor someone special. It's a little bit of a bittersweet occasion because this is his last Sunday. And so we want to send him off. And uh, so if you would join me in welcoming up to the stage, Delante Simpson. And Delante, why don't you take a minute just to share uh, with us a little bit about what's happening with you. Good morning. Good morning. You hear me? So I wanted to um, thank you guys uh, for the hospitality uh, here in Guam. Uh, I spent a pretty good majority of my adult life here. Um, I made some good friends, family. I thank, thank I wanted to thank those who were who were praying for me, who have provided for me. Um, I'm very appreciative. But I'm transitioning into the war zone. So uh, Delante just mentioned he's transitioning to a war zone, and so. Uh, we want to pray for him, for his protection. Uh, Delante is uh, one of the, of all the people I know, he is the most unique. And I know all of us are unique, but uh, usually even in our uniqueness, we kind of fit into certain categories. You know, you might be athletic or maybe you like to run, maybe you are academic, maybe you're funny, maybe you're quiet, but Delante seems to fit in a category all his own. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> But uh, I mean that in the best way possible. He's a very special person. We are going to miss him. And uh, we have a plaque for Delante. Inside here is, I won't even take it out. It's fragile. It's made of glass. But it says, thank you for your faithful service uh, with the audiovisual team. For those who don't know, he's been serving behind the scenes um, and making worship what it is. And we're very thankful for you. On this also is a scripture verse, it's Hebrews 6.10, which says, um, God is not unjust, so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his people in having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. So here you go, Delante. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for Delante. Lord, thank you for just the special person that you made him to be. Lord, we know that uh, wherever he goes, he'll be a blessing as he represents you. Lord, we pray for your special protection upon him as he goes from here uh, to his next assignment. We ask God that you go before him, that your favor go before him, that you prepare the way. Lord, not just for his safety, but for his future friends, for his future ministry. Lord, even his destiny, we bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear me right? It's on, right? Yay! Morning, people online. <laughs> I wasn't here last week, so I did not see the decoration until today. And, and as you can see, we're, we just stepped into that season of uh, Christmas. So for the next few weeks, that's where the word will be about, or it would be about Christmas. We're going to touch on a short series about Christmas entitled In Time. So are you ready? 
Are you excited? This is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, right? Every day should be the same for us as believers. But if you're there, like what Ben said, if you're, you feel like you've been beaten up, you're hanging on, give me 20 some minutes, okay? I hope you are blessed with this message, because I was. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this season that we celebrate every year. Father, I pray that you would just open our eyes to see what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. In all the years that you've celebrated Christmas, year after year, have you ever asked this question? Go ahead. Put it up. Have you ever asked this question? After a year after year of celebrating, who is this child? Who is this child that we celebrate every Christmas? So today I want to show you just uh, one of the aspects uh, for this week of who this child is. That good? So let's begin with John 1.1. 1, 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. And it says in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John introduces not a per- person, but it says this is his introduction, that in the beginning was the Word. So for us to understand who is this child, we've got to first establish or first get to know who is the Word. Why, would John, why did John start with this? In the beginning was the Word. Now for those that originally received this letter or heard this letter, for them they knew exactly what John was talking about. To the Jews, the word, word, is something that they know of because it echoes from Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, what do we read and what do we know? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was the word of God that was spoken and whatever God spoke, it came to be. So for the Jewish people, they understood when they hear the word, word, it is about the word of God and it is about the word of God in action and when they, when they put that together, the word of God is really God himself. Now, to the, to the Gentiles or to the Greek, it was a little different. They don't necessarily know where creation began, but they, but they do admit that there is order and there is reasoning in creation. What do I mean by that? Take, for example, right now, earth. The distance between the sun and the earth is just... Pull up reason is just pull up order because if we would just be a little up, our environment will totally be different. The degree of tilt of earth and how it spins around its axis, why we have four seasons, how it orbits around the sun, all of that we can see as order, as reason. There's a reason behind it. If we would just tilt a little different, our degree of the tilt of earth on its axis, the environment, the atmosphere, everything changes again. So that's what it is. So for the Jews, they understand when they hear the word word, it means the word of God or God himself. And to the Greeks and even people outside, they understand it just to be order and reason. So this is where John begins. And he says that in the beginning was the word. So it's John is saying that in the beginning, even before creation, the word has already existed. It is really outside of time. It is eternal. It is in eternity. So that's his first clause of this uh, one single verse. And then he moves on to say that, and the word was with God. So there is a being called word that is eternal. Then the second clause that he says is that, and this being called word is with God. And the word with God here does not only mean that, oh, uh, I am with someone, meaning close prox- uh, proximity, meaning they're, they're, they're right next to each other. But that word with God really means that this word and God were always in constant fellowship. They were always in what we just celebrated earlier, in common union, in perfect relationship. Take note of that because that's important. Okay? So the word and God was always in constant fellowship. So that's the second clause. And then in the third clause of this one verse, it says, and the word was God. So there is a being known as the word who is eternal, who is with God, who is in constant fellowship with God, and who is also God. So that means that the same essence that God has, the word has. Whatever God is, the word is, because God and the word are the same. Amen? Still with me? 
And then John goes on in verse 2. It says that he was in the beginning with God. So the Word was in the beginning with God. He Almost like he wrapped it up all over again. He, he's eternal and he's with God. There's an eternity on the Word and there's a relationship with the Word and God. Still with me? Now move on to the next verse. We're trying to get to answer. We're trying to answer the question: Who is this child? So far, John. All, uh, so far, John has only told us the the beginning was the Word. And verse three of John chapter one it says, "All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made." So all thing was made through the Word. Uh, first Colossians, please, to give us more understanding. So in First Colossians, this is what it reads: He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. The word firstborn does not mean that, oh, he did not exist, then he was born, then he existed. As we have just said earlier, he has pre-existed. He has exist, existed all through eternity. The firstborn, what it's really saying is that he is preeminent over all creation. He was before all. He is above all creation, which tells us that he is above what? COVID-19. Amen? Okay, only a few people believe that. He is above thrones or dominions or principality, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is above all, before all, he is all in all. Amen? So this is the word. And then John moves on, and this is where we, we get a personality of who the word is. Go ahead, next verse, please. Then in John chapter 1, verse 14, John goes on to say, And the word became flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For most of us, we already know this, right? So who is the Word? The Word is the Word of God. The Word of God is the Son of God. The Son of God is Jesus, okay? But just in case you didn't know it yet, Jesus is the Word. He is the Son of God. He is the second person of the Trinity, amen? No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So John now gives identi uh, an identity to the Word, which is the Son. In, Christ in uh, Christian theology, we call him God the Son. So because he has a distinction as the Son, that therefore it also tells us that there's a distinction of who the Father is. So, the God is the, so you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? So what can we conclude based on the, on the scriptures that we have just read? So we started with a question, who is this child? Well, go ahead. This is the point. Next verse, please. The baby born at Bethlehem was God. And then the baby born at Bethlehem was God made man. So who is this child? That's the child that was born in, in Bethlehem. That is the child that we celebrate every Christmas. He was God and he was God made man. Now, I want, you to, uh, I want you to see this. God became man, all right? But when God became man, that was something new to him. But one thing that never stopped was that, because remember, he was with God. The second person of the Trinity, Jesus, when he became God or when he became man, the relationship with the Father never ceased. It was always still there. He was in constant relationship. He was in constant fellowship with the Father. But what did stop was this. Jesus voluntarily did not use his godly attributes. Are you still with me? He was still 100% God, and yet he became man, so he became 100% man. The only thing he did not use was his godly attributes. And I hope this gets you excited. And why did, why did it get me excited? So that means when Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth, performed everything that he did as completely 100% human being. So when Jesus turned water into wine, he did not turn water into wine as God, but as a human being. 
When Jesus walked on water, he walked on water as a 100% human being. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, he raised him from the dead as a totally human being. When he fed the thousands, when the storm was raging and all his disciples were growing crazy on the top, he, where was he, what was the guy doing? He was sleeping on the bilge of the ship. That's how peaceful he is. He did that was he, while he was completely a human being. And this is an encouragement for us, church, because we are believers. If Jesus was able to do all of this as a completely human being, then therefore, we also can do all of this as a completely human being. So the question is, what is then the key that Jesus was able to do all of that? That, church, would be the exciting thing to know. Amen? You know, uh, as the year ends, uh, like what Dan said, some of us were probably be, uh, feeling it like that we're, we're getting beat up. We're just barely hanging in there. But you know, as believe, but Jesus was able to live a life victoriously on earth as a completely human being. So you want to know what the secret is? You want to know the key on how he lived life on earth? It's actually in the passage that we went through already. Can you bring back uh, verse 14, please? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Let me show you the key through my story. I was saved back in 1997. Uh, that's when I gave my life to the Lord. It's been more than 20 years that, that, that I've been walking with the Lord. Uh, through a prophetic uh, team that came from the Philippines, they gave, uh, they gave us a prophetic word. And, and I'll share with you uh, four lines of my, of my prophecy. It goes like this. It says, I'm calling you. So God is telling me, I am calling you to a disciplined way of life. I am even giving you my spirit to give you that discipline. I am calling you to a greater knowledge of me, and I am calling you into the secret place. Church, you know that is really a general principle of the call of God. All of us has been called to a greater knowledge of God. Would you agree? Say amen if you do. We are all called into a greater knowledge of God. Because the greater knowledge of God that we have, the greater the relationship that we have with God. So really, this is a general call to be called into the greater knowledge of God. So then back in uh, 2020 is about to end. We're about to turn over a new decade. Back in 2010, while we were in a prayer meeting in our old sanctuary in Mighty, I was with a group of guys, and we were praying together. And I, I heard the, the Spirit of the Lord uh, ask, or tell me this. Ask me for an inheritance. Ask me for an inheritance in the Spirit. You know how long it took me before I asked? It took me two years before I actually asked something from the Lord. You know why? Because I did not know what to ask for. So within that two years, I began to look at the Scripture. I went to look for anything that, that says inheritance. So I went to the book of Le uh, Leviticus. It's like how the priests... The, the Levites uh, did not get an inheritance in the land, but they got God as their inheritance. So when I saw it, it's like, wow, Lord, that's not fair. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. Then I came across the, the story of Solomon, where Solomon actually asked God for wisdom. So finally, I, figured, uh, uh, I, 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 I kind of figured it out. Okay, Lord, if you're going to ask me for inheritance, then this is what I'm going to ask. This is what I asked God, Lord. Since I cannot understand the scripture, then Lord, give me an understanding of scripture. That's what I ask for. I ask God so that I can understand the scripture. It's been 10 years and so far so good. Amen? Yeah. So, and, that's, and, 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 and this really began a journey for me. It's been eight years and it has changed the way I look at things. One of the first things God asked me to do as I asked him, give me a... Give me a a knowledge of scripture or give me an understanding of scripture is that look for my name. God asked me to look for his name, write down all my names. So I did. I went through Genesis and I wrote down all the names of God that I know that I came across. The Lord, Elohim, El Shaddai, Almighty, all of that. God, refuge, all of that. I wrote it down. I, I wrote down where I found it and I wrote down how many times it was repeated. When I got through all of that, then God showed me that all that name, God showed me that all that name is like a wheel. You know what a bicycle wheel? In a bicycle wheel, you have a center hub, and you got spokes that goes out to the rubber wheel. So God showed me that all that name is really just the wheel, the outside wheel. But at the center of that is the hub. And there God showed me a name that I did not write. 
You know, what was that name? The name that God showed me was the name Father. And then he, he told me that with all this name, the center of all of this is that I am a father. And, and, and when that happened, I consciously made a decision to change the way I pray, to change the way I look at scripture. I began to look at scripture, not looking for God, but looking for him as a father. Amen? Here, let me share you this. Um, this came up while we were doing praise and worship. I did not share this during the, uh, the first, uh, first service. <clears throat> Today, with all of this that's happening with us, the COVID-19, the economy, perhaps you're going through a difficult time also with your health or anything like that. Whenever we Christians go through that, we usually say, oh, I'm going to a battle, right? Do you agree? That's how we say it. We're going through a battle, right? Okay, you guys don't want to agree. <laughs> We're going through a battle. How many times? Because, uh, uh, and we do. We call it a spiritual battle. We call it a battle. You know, in the book of Kings, in the natural, Israel will always go to a battle. You know what God would tell Israel? God will tell Israel, the battle is mine. So what do you do when God said it's mine? You give it to the Lord. Amen. We spoke of tithes earlier. The tithes is the Lord. So what do we do with the tithes? We give it to the Lord. So when God tells you the battle is mine, what do you do? You give the battle to God. And in the book of Kings, every battle that God said the battle is mine, they were victorious. In reality, they didn't do anything. So what happens after a, a battle? What do you get? You get spoils of war. You get looty or booty and loots, right? You get all the treasures that the enemy has left. Now, because God said the battle is mine, who should that belong to, the spoils? Naturally, it should belong to the guy that went to the battle, right? But no, who gets the spoils? The nation got the spoiled. So it just blew my mind. It's like, God, send me into the battle. I'll go to the battle. No, mean, meaning that the battle is the Lord, but the spoils of the battle belongs to us. What does that mean? So when we go to spiritual battle, when God says, this is my battle, give it to me, then give it to God and watch, rest and watch God do the battle. But when all the battle is done, all the spoils goes to us. Ever seen that before? So that's why now my attitude is, Lord, come on, Lord, give it to me. <laughs> Uh, hopefully I don't take more, much more than I, can, uh, than I can chew, right? Lord, give me that mountain, Lord. Okay, I will go and take that mountain. Give me the battle because there's spo my motivation now is, Lord, there's so much spoils on the, in the battle that you're, you're allowing us to, to go through, but yet the battle is not really ours. What was my point again? Okay, so what was the key? What was Jesus' key that he was able to live a life on earth? And, and that's <clears throat> and the key is that. The key is that what God has shown me that if you would, would uh, behold me as a father, then that will, you know what will that do to you? Then you will begin to see yourself as a child, as a son, and a daughter of God. And that's what John was saying. It says that, and we behold, or we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus was with God. Or the word was with God, the word was God, but yet here it says he is the begotten son. In another chapter in John, he says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the who? To the Father. Why didn't he say no one comes to God? If he was with God. Instead, what did he say? No one comes to the Father except through me. Because Jesus was really trying to declare God as a father because he was the son. And that is the key to living a victorious life, to be able to conquer everything, is what we know that God is a father to us, that, and we have gone through a long series in Romans, and in Romans we, we, we have known that because of what Christ has done for us, we are now in him. So therefore, because we are now in Christ, whatever is true of Christ is true of us. So however the father treats Christ, is how the Father treats us. How the Father loves Christ is the same way the Father loves us. So that's what I did when God showed me that uh, the center hub of all my names is the name Father. And I made that conscious decision to change the way I pray. I began changing the way I call him. 
I would always call God Father. Now, is it wrong that we, that we don't call uh, God Father? It's okay. But you, you know what? The world also knows God as God. And I said this early this morning, and that's why many people don't like going to church because their understanding of God is God is a God of justice. And that's why when people go to church, they bring a sacrifice of blood. A sacrifice of blood meaning they come to God asking for forgiveness. Now, as, new, uh, uh, as believers, we also bring God's sacrifice, but what is the sacrifice that we bring to him? A sacrifice of praise, thanksgiving. That's what we bring. That's why the key to how Jesus was able to walk the earth while he was 100% human was that he was in constant fellowship with his father. He knew exactly who he is. He is the son of God and his father is his father. And the third one is he's got the Holy Spirit. Again, in the book of Romans, we have spoken about that, that everything, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit we have access to. And that's why knowing who we are, knowing who Christ is, and that's why John said this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, is it wrong that we only behold God as God? No, it's all right. But I'm showing you that there's something so much greater, that we are being called, we've been given the right to be called child of God, children of God. Amen? And that's up to you. All right? Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that who we are in you. Father, thank you for the revelation of who Jesus is to us. That because he is the Son of God, that because he is your Son, that we are in him, therefore, we can always see you as a father to us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask and I just pray for us right now. Father, I pray for our church. I just pray, Father, that we, as, uh, as we grow in this uh, new year, I just pray, Father, that we would make that conscious decision, that we would begin to see you, not just a God, not just the God, but a Father to us. And Father, I pray that you would begin to open our eyes to see that there's much more that we have in you. There's so much more. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for today. I just pray, Father, that uh, as we exit today, as we, as we go about, I pray that you continue to protect us, keep us, bless us, have your way in our lives, and continue to draw us into you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're dismissed, church. See you again next week. And I'm rising up with you. Rising up with you. Rising up with you. Rising up with you. You take me high on the wings of your truth. Yes, I'm rising up with you.
and I'm rising up with you.